Breathe in, breathe out. Think of the breath sweeping through the whole body, cleaning everything out. All the cobwebs, all the little patterns of tension. Sweep them right out. The Buddha talks about making yourself clean. And it's not so much a matter of having the body clean, although he does advise the monks to keep their huts clean and keep their places clean. But the important cleanliness is the cleanliness of your thoughts and your words and your deeds. Cleanliness in your deeds is not killing, not stealing, not having illicit sex. Cleanliness in your words is not speaking falsely, not speaking divisively, not speaking harshly, not engaging in idle chatter. And cleanliness in the mind is not giving in to inordinate greed, not harboring thoughts of ill will, and trying to develop right view that your actions really do make a difference. The quality of your action will determine the quality of the results that you're going to be experiencing. When you think in these ways, the mind is clean. When you speak in these ways, avoiding those forms of wrong speech, your words are clean. And when you follow those three, pre three precepts that have to do with the body, okay, your body is clean, your actions are clean. When they're clean, they're not a place where germs can thrive. The germs here are greed, aversion, and delusion. Because if you look at your actions and engage in actions that are not skillful, and you take that as normal, then the normal condition allows the germs to thrive. Your greed has lots of rooms to thrive. Your anger, your delusion has lots of rooms to th room to thrive. And then, of course, when you sit down to meditate, you've got a diseased mind. So as you go through the day, remember, the way you live your day is going to determine how well your meditation is going to go. <clears throat> and the way you meditate, of course, will have an influence on the day. So try to get a sense of well-being right here. It's a lot easier to be clean in your thoughts and words and deeds when the mind does have a place to rest. Of course, you can rest more easily when everything is clean. So as we keep the place clean around here, Remember, it's not just the place we're trying to keep clean, we're trying to keep our thoughts, our words, and our deeds clean as well. And that way the germs of greed, aversion, and delusion would have a chance to thrive. A little bit of them shows up and we recognize them for what they are. The problem with having a lot of dirt in the mind, a lot of dirt in your thoughts and words and deeds, is the germs are there and it's perfectly normal. You look around and you say, everybody else is that way, well that must be the way it should be. Well, just because everybody else is that way doesn't mean it should be that way. And that's not how the Buddha defined normalcy. Normalcy is a mind that doesn't engage in activities like that. Mind at peace. That's the, For him, that's the mind at normalcy. When you're speaking to one another, if you speak in harsh ways or speak in ways that are divisive, okay, that's abnormal. But if you make it your normalcy, then greed, aversion, and delusion will have a better chance to thrive. So keep the place clean. Remember John Fuang's analogy. If you keep your thoughts, words, and deeds clean, then the slightest little bit of dirt or dust that comes in, you're going to spot it immediately. And you're going to see, that's dirt, that's dust, that's new, that wasn't here before, it's here now, we've got to get rid of it. But if you don't keep things clean, layer after layer after layer of dust will come in, and you won't notice it at all. It just gets added to what's already there. So this matter of keeping clean is something you do all day long, every day. Clean your words, clean your thoughts, clean your deeds. And the mind will be able to be here in the present moment with a lot more comfort and ease. <laughs>